All right, here we go. We're live. Happy uh, Thursday evening to everybody. Anybody watching? I'm sure we'll get some more people struggling in as we do this. We're not. We don't normally have a set time to do a live stream on uh, on Thursday nights at eight o'clock Eastern time, and our European audience is certainly asleep. But uh, thanks to thanks for uh, everybody tuning in. And uh, we got a, a really cool uh, group here. Really excited, Vic. Of course, uh, you guys have seen before is joining. But uh, I know you guys recognize the guy below me. Uh, Pete Pardo from Sea of Tranquility, uh, the master. Uh, Pete, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me. That deserves some applause. We'll give you some, <laughs> we'll give you some audience applause. And, of course, uh, Jordan Blum, yeah, you've been on our channel a few times before uh, mm -hmm. and a, a good friend. Hey, you got applause, too. Um, and a uh, writer for uh, notable uh, magazines, Loudwire, Metal Injection, Frog Magazine sometimes for us. And so, uh, yeah, good to have you guys on, man. I, I like, uh, we were talking about this before we came on live and, and, uh, this topic was sort of interesting to do, um, just to think about because we're, we're always having these anniversaries coming up now almost daily, right? Albums that are celebrating 50 years or 40 years, 25 years. And it's almost like all the classics have been predetermined based on, their longevity and what we all know they're like they're obvious now at this point dark side of the moon foxtrot blah 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 there's there's a million of them so i don't know i just got to thinking what are well you know every album we review now we all seem to sort of like the output from bands today is really really good almost every album we review has some some merit right that, that we all seem to dig um but what what's going to be something that will really stick out and be remembered and talked about on whatever the new social media output of the of the day is 25 years from now or, or even longer. So and that was sort of the the inspiration for the topic. And uh, and I and I thought it'd be cooler if we could bring some outside guys into this, so we don't have the same minds. And because uh, a lot of us at Prog Report, people know we like our Mike Portnoy stuff and our Neil Moore stuff and our you know Stephen Wilson stuff and all those kind of things. So um, I'm curious to see what you guys think. But anyway, I, preliminary thoughts on it. I mean, Pete, Jordan, you know, I'd be curious what you're, you know, when you got the idea, what you're sort of, in, you know, thought it was. Yeah, I mean, this this was, I think, a really interesting one to think about because it, it's hard today in 2024 to say, well, what might be looked at as a classic 10 years from now or 20 years from now? And, you know, I listen to and review so much stuff. And I think for me, an album that has staying power is one that you really want to kind of focus on. So, you know, we went back 10 years for this exercise and I went and looked at, you know, on our webzine, we do our favorite albums of the year every year at the end of every right. year. We do, we've been doing it forever. So I went back and I looked at like all of my like top tens each year. And again, I'm always, we, we review stuff on SOT that's, prog prog metal power metal death metal thrash classic rock fusion <laughs> all that stuff. so I, I tried to really single out stuff that was just really prog um and not right. some that bands that are kind of on the periphery i didn't pick some of those and i looked at them and i'm like all right well which of these am i still really listening to today 10 years later eight years later five years later a year later and i still think really really highly of and might I think 10 years from now that it's even greater than I feel about it today. Cause you know, we've had with all these classics you talked about before, we've got 50, 40, 30 years with those and we've had them sifting through radio and all that sort of stuff. We grew up with these albums. So it's kind of hard to say now myself, especially I'm 58 years old, right? 10 years from now, am I going to think something from 2018 is a classic or not? Or am I still going to be listening to right. 112 and Foxtrot all over again, right? So, but I think personally, this was pretty cool because I I, I kind of put together a, a real long list. And then I yeah, really started saying, like, nah, nah, maybe, right. definitely. <laughs> and then I went up with a shorter list. And then I'm like, all right, I got to pick five of these. And I think I've got five personally that I feel pretty strongly about that hopefully not just me think they might be classics 10 or 20 years from now, but we'll see. Yeah. So we'll yeah. See Jordan, what... Jordan, how about you? Cause you, cause you also, you review a lot of records and you, and you're more critical. Like you, you really are, 
you can write a negative review, which is cool. Not everybody, not everybody does. So, you know, props mm -hmm. for that. But. Yeah, to, um, to benefit and detriment sometimes. But yeah, I kind of, I always try to, yeah, pride myself as, as much as I can say that without any, any ego of, of, even if I know the artist is going to see this, I have to be honest. That's the whole point of journalism is, is the integrity. Um, so yeah, I mean, for me, I think I picked at least a couple that if you know me, you probably can guess. Um, but I picked, I also left off some artists that I, unfortunately, I just don't think they have enough recognition to even like be remembered as much as I would love for them to have more recognition. Um, and I just kind right. of going along to what Pete said, I thought of a few that just, I'll always remember that first time I heard it and it just like blew me away and I still go back to it. And I, you know, as soon as I remember that it, like I see it in my, my uh, phone and it's like, oh yeah, I have to like single that out. That is, that is a class that deserves to be a classic, even if the band maybe isn't big enough. Like I hope over the next 25 years, they get big enough and they are remembered going down like in history and just doing something yeah. special. The thing that I, I tried to really deter, uh, sort of put as a line in the sand, I guess, was do I think this is going to be a classic or do, or do I just like it? Yeah. And that was, that's the hard one, right? Cause, there's some that just I know I love, but I know a lot of people couldn't give a crap. So that's a whole different different room. Um, Vic, uh, a quick a quick thoughts, and then we'll get started because I don't want to take too long. I know Pete has eight more podcasts to record tonight, so we got <laughs> we got to get to it. One interestingly enough, uh, Rick Beato had a had a, a short eight minute video where he talks about that history has already sort of picked out albums that we can look at or not not so much albums but artists that we could look at in 100 years from now and he based it on they haven't released any new material in over you know 30 years and they're getting a ton of streams from spotify and the four bands are nirvana queen the beatles and i'm trying to remember the, the fourth one, one. Uh, Nirvana, Queen, The Beatles, and The Police. They, the Police is weird. Well, because, and, and his whole thing was, part of it is they only have five albums. So their song selection isn't that much. So if they happen to be popular, they're going to hit because they don't have that many songs to split the load. Uh, you know, Queen is kind of the exception because they have a lot of albums, but they haven't released any new material since Freddie Mercury passed. But a song like Bohemian Rhapsody has had two uh, revivals, ones with uh, the uh, Wayne's World and Wayne's one World. with the and one with the movie that was released back in, I guess, in 18. Um, yeah. So so mm -hmm. those that those are the kind of things that keep pushing it and keep. But that's not the kind of criteria we're going to have with these artists, uh, you know, in the. Yes, yeah, it's loose. I mean, now, there's, there's not a specific criteria. We're just sort right. of projecting right. so what we think. So. Um, and We're getting a he, recommendation here in the comments. Somebody's saying we should consider Coldplay. I like Coldplay. I don't think they're going to be mentioned on this podcast. I'm just going to go out on the limb and say that's not going to happen. Um, but... I've got to change my list now. <laughs> All there, right. There, so will let's, be, let's... there will be honorable mention. So let's go ahead and uh, and get started. Um, so uh, yeah, you each, we'll each do like a round robin thing and go one one at a time. You want to do it that way? Is that cool? Um, uh, yeah, Pete. Why don't you kick us off with your uh, your first one? Okay, so my first one might be an odd choice for some because they're a pretty obscure band, but I tried to pick bands that not only I think the album is going to stand the test of time, but I try to I'm trying to kind of envision the pulse of the prog rock community, right? I, I see lots of comments and talk to a lot of people who listen to prog from all over the globe. And I think this band really has filled a gap from a band from the early nineties that I think a lot of us really miss because they've been together, not together. That's Anglogard. This band is also from Scandinavia. This album came out last year. The band is called George Joe and the album is called Saliget. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Scandinavian oh. Prague. All of the lyrics and vocals are in Norwegian. The music is complex. It's interesting. It's melodic. And it, for me, it, 
brings to mind everything that was so great about the early 90s Prague scene in Scandinavia and specifically then in Sweden. It's all really happening in Norway now. And this album has got a lot of buzz. This band, every album they release, they, they only have a handful of albums. Everyone has gotten better. I think this is their magnum opus so far. I'm not saying that they won't come out with something better, but man, you want like Hammond organ and Moog and Mellotron and flute and weaving guitars, acoustic and electric bass, got everything. It's complex. It's really, really lots of earworms going on. It's just magical, magical music. And I think that for people who want a little more substance to their prog rock music and like stuff that's adventurous, they don't mind hearing vocals not sung in English. I think this is going to stand the test of time, just like those early Anglogard albums do that came out like 30 years ago and that we all right. have as classics nowadays. Well, from the more recent time, I think something like this is we're going to be talking about this 10 and 20 years from now. Hey, that's the way that's out of the box, but that's cool. I'm not even I haven't even heard that album. So Oh, uh, you need to. to. It's it's great. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's yeah, nice, nice pick. Very cool. This this yeah. whole thing is worth it just just by that pick. That was yeah, awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's great. New yeah, listening nice coming one. up soon. <laughs> okay, uh Jordan, what do you got? Um, all right. So my first one, I, I did this chronologically. So 2014, starting with a band uh from Sweden that used to be very, very metal. And then they stopped doing death metal vocals and half of the fan base rejected them, a band called Opeth. And every time I get a chance to talk about this album, I will defend it. It's an album called Pal Communion, which I think I ranked it in my book as the second best Opeth album after Ghost Reveries. I stand by that. I'm not going to wow. go on a whole big rant. But <laughs> every time I get to talk about this album, I put it the same way, which is that Heritage if Heritage was then like dipping their toes in like 70s jazz fusion, but not committing, right. Pal Communion is diving into it. And it is damn near perfect to me. I mean, you have the opener, Eternal Rains Will Come, which has, I think, the catchiest verse melody they've ever done. It just goes into, obviously, the song Goblin is an homage to Goblin. Yeah. Um, you have maybe one of the greatest and most like beautiful segues I've ever heard between songs, which is the last two songs, Voice of Treason, going into Faith and Others. So it's just like, it, to me, it's the perfect mixture of everything that makes Opeth special and everything that they've been leading to up until this point. Because I, I think like people often under underappreciate or just don't notice how much of their stuff was progressive early on. They act like it was kind of a brand new thing that they did. And it's it's been there. Um, yeah. So I think it's the best mixture of everything that like makes them unique with yeah very clear references to '70s stuff, but they pull it off. It does to me. It never sounds derivative. It's always so colorful and imaginative, and just it's just like so perfectly paced, and it just flows. And again, I said it's it's my second favorite Opeth album. I think it's easily the best thing they've done since Watershed, since he gave up the vote, the death vocals. Yeah, um, I mean that's my favorite of the new era albums. I think yeah, I think it's fantastic. Easy. I think we had it ranked pretty high when we did uh we did the that wheel uh, a few months ago. It's a great choice. I mean, I had Sorceress in my honorable mentions list, but I think you could pick any of those albums from Watershed and on easily. Yeah, they're all great. Yeah, good. Yeah, great stuff. Um, yeah, awesome. All right, Vic, what's yours? So I I. I'm not sure how I'm working this out chronologically or not, but uh, this in the prog report, I'm the metal guy, and uh, mm -hmm. and I know that a lot of the guys that would normally uh, they they love this band, and this particular album, I just think um, it kind of fell into a perfect storm of the secret of show business is always leave them wanting for more, and this is an album that came out uh, during the pandemic. And the album didn't get quite the props that it should have gotten with a proper tour. And you talk to the artist and they interviewed saying that they felt they had to abandon it. And they went ahead and just recorded or just released a new album. Uh, the album is, I'm trying to see if I can get it here. It's Rise Radiant, Caligula's Horse. Um, just terrific, uh, you know, as, a, as, a, as an audiophile, these guys just really hit the spectrum so nicely. And this is just heavy and you know just man they they do it they do it right down in australia and it's one of those where when it was released and this is where subjectivity is a little bit difficult 
being in, you know, during the pandemic, man, just a, a lot of frustration, a lot of uncertainty, and something like this comes out, and it's just absolutely terrific music, but we didn't get to enjoy it the way that we normally get to enjoy it. I, that's why I think that there's going to be a longing yeah. for this that it didn't get, and, you know, I think that it will... It's great music. It's a great CD. I think it'll stand the test of time, but just the fact that it didn't get I don't want to say overplayed, but it didn't get toured the way that normally things get toured. I think people are right. going to keep longing for this. So Rise Radiant uh, 2020. Great, uh, great album. Great band. The new album's killer. Um, but I love that one, too. That's a good choice. I love that album. A lot of great stuff on there. I don't know if I want to go chronological. See, I couldn't bring the CDs and stack them because I'm still at the last minute making changes to what I what I'm deciding to go with. Um, I don't think I'm going to go uh, chronological, just sort of random. Um, but I think my first obvious choice uh, is going to be uh, Hand Cannot Erase by Stephen Wilson, yeah. um, 2015. Uh, I think that's already considered a classic album, pretty much. Uh, and I think that Sometimes it's a tie between that and Raven, Refuse to Sing. Raven is predates this podcast uh, idea by a year, I guess, or two. Um, so I went with this one, but I think that it's, it is up there. It's as good an album as in the modern prog sphere that, that you could make. It, it hits all the boxes, the, the melody, the story, the concept, um, the high, the high parts The you know, um, the guest vocals by by Nanette on there are just ridiculous and and uh it's it's got everything i don't think he's i think that's peak steven wilson everything since then some has been good and some has been okay but i think it's nothing's hit near that you know and i think that's going to be one of those that that look, we look back on as as a, as a landmark record i think Actually, I had I had to change it because I had that on mine too, Did you? Uh, and not to like take the attention, but yeah, I, I I was thinking like the Raven I may prefer more. Obviously, it came out for, like before 2014, but I remember going to the New York listening session, and as we listened to it, I thought, okay, you remade King Crimson's Lizard, like you did it really well. But good job. So yeah, I I just wanted to chime in and say I agree that Hand Cannot Erase I think is a more original album and I think it's it is like the perfect mixture of his influences and his uniqueness and his esotericness and it's like that right balance there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's still awesome. All right, round two, Pete. All right. So I knew I was going to pick this band from the UK. The one I really wanted to pick came before our timeline. So I had to push that one aside. I knew this was the next big choice. And uh Haken Fauna. Ooh. Love these guys. Uh, right. This to me, you know, the, the three albums that came before were kind of of a set. And then there's this one, which sees them again, kind of evolving a little bit and going in different directions. It's melodic. It's heavy. Mr. Jennings has such a unique vocal style, I think. Man, the guitar playing is so good. These guys are master musicians. And while, you know, early on, they certainly took their cue from Dream Theater, I think they've really forged their own style. And I think, uh, you know, years from now, we're going to look back at Haken as one of the great, whether you call them prog metal or just heavy prog bands of the last, you know, of the early 2000s or the, of the 2000s of this century. And I think this album to me is one of their great albums. It's got a great album cover and I love animals. So of course I'm going to like that, but yeah, so many great songs. I mean, yeah, Taurus is just amazing. Love bite is so good. Every, uh, every song on here is a classic masterful production, amazing musicianship. And uh, yeah, have to have this one. Did George awesome. talk you yep. into that one, by the way? Cause uh, I know to. that. No, he didn't have to. <laughs> I, I, you know, one of the bands, they're one of the first bands that I thought of when we were agreed to do this. I said, Yeah, definitely. I yeah. Have an album. And then I looked yeah. at, I went and looked at the years that I'm like, ah, oh, damn, I can't pick the mountain because that's to me, the mountain is their greatest. Right. Album. Well, Vic said the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, no like, it's got to be this one because this is my favorite of all the ones that have come in this time in this uh, 10 year period. So, yeah, got to have them. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's nice to see them stretching out a little bit on this new record, and I think that gives them a sort of a second life because 
you know, not not keep it because they can keep making the same record over and over again if they wanted to. But they found a way to not do that. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, listen, for them to accomplish everything they've accomplished as a band doing that kind of music in this day and age is, is remarkable. Right. <laughs> so it's it's very cool. Yeah, they are awesome, awesome. Awesome guys. All right, Jordan. Um, all right. So my next pick. Um, is another band that I'm sure most people have heard of, and then I think I'm going to move away to stuff that's lesser known at least a couple times. But um, I'm going with an album called Coma Ecliptic by Between the Buried and Me from 2015. Um, yep, badass. Awesome. If I could have, again, like what Pete said, if I could have, I, I would have. What was that? No, no, great pick. That's, oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, if, I, if, I, if I could have, I would have picked the Parallax 2 future sequence because I think that's arguably the greatest progressive metal album ever made. Um, and I've always said I prefer everything they've done after Colors to Colors. I like the progressive stuff. Um, I think Coma Ecliptic is, again, like another example of a great balance between like the, the heavy in-your-face progressive metal stuff of like Colors and Parallax and Automata and stuff and the kind of more mellow, warm, almost Pink Floydian stuff of the great misdirect. Like Coma, Coma Ecliptic is like, maybe their most accessible album period that while still giving you a bit of an edge um and the story of course is always creative they're obsessed with like dreams and and mind messing messing with people's minds and the way there's like reprisals up at the end of it and it's just i just i yeah. think it's it's just great and yeah i mean i, I think they're I, i've always said between the better me is the best band at what they do there's a lot of imitators but they're the best at what they do and i think this is if not their best, their second best at that. Jordan, I, you're, you're you're doing great. Yeah, that's 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 killer. That's you you picked two of my favorite bands for your first two picks. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's I actually. So if if you don't mind, Roy, because I'm I'm going to segue into my pick because yeah. I was down between Coma Ecliptic or I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I got to do the review for this album, but this album was actually released about four months apart. It's Automata 1 and 2. And I think that the reason I lean towards this is because, first of all, the creativity of how they released it, I thought it was really cool. It was very prog. Um, but I think they, in my opinion, they went a little bit heavier, but also a little bit more melodic. And then they throw in one of their crazy songs, you know, The Voice of Trespass, you know, and it is... The, the two of them individually were great, and the first one left us wanting for more, and then the second one comes out. And the unusual thing about the album is that in their usual style of once they finish telling their concept, you know, by the time the last song, you know, comes around, the main character has fallen. The main character and, and you know, is, is either dead or lost or desolate. In this album, there's actually hope, which is unusual. But um, the stories the, on their album escape right past me. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I love love this band. Um, probably nobody else in the prog report really pays attention to them. Like I definitely like I do, but other guys. Oh, I, no, I like them, too. Not, maybe not as much as you, but but you it, I think it's well, it's definitely you and me and then, then no one else in our right. in our core for sure. And there's and there's um, guys that like the heavy stuff, but. Um, yeah, it's a combination of, you know, and, and as, as they have matured and they'll still do the growls and, but they'll do the melody and just their maturity, I, I think is really great on that. I, I really think that that is their, their peak. Coma clicked it was close for me, but I decided to go with Automata. You know, what's interesting. I was, I was, we've been talking a lot about Queen and how their diversity and what they could do was unlike any other band pretty much ever in rock and no one's even come close to being that diverse after them um the night at the opera for example is 12 different style you know it's all over the place no one could do that maybe the beatles before them and that's it um to some degree in, in a prog, prog metal world these guys sort of do that a little bit and, and that's actually goes unnoticed, I think, a little bit. They can be silly. They can be, you know, slow, fast, creative, heavy as fuck. Like, I mean, it's, they really bring it. And that that's what makes them stand out among all the bands that do this stuff, for sure. You know, at least for me. I've always um, thought they're the most underrated band doing prog metal. 
and they've never released a bad album and man live they are yeah. amazing they yeah just blow your face off yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right and um i'm gonna go next how how like every every album kind of has like a moment for tommy rogers to go into like a french accent or just some weird detour yeah. and i gotta like, i gotta agree with you vic really fast that i think the proverbial bellow is the greatest thing they've ever done and i remember putting that on and when you get to that please pick up the phone part i remember my yeah. jaw dropped of just like this is perfection yeah, yeah. it's so cool yeah. right yeah that's great yeah. stuff um all right am i up then okay um yeah i think this is going to be an interesting choice but um it's a band that uh has been around forever but i think they made one of the best albums of that year when it came out. And I think it's one of the best albums in their entire catalog of some amazing of all time classic records. I'm going to go with uh, sticks and crash to the crown from uh, yeah. 2021. Yes. And I mean, it's an album that honestly, I couldn't believe how good it was when it, like I did not expect, like I liked um, the mission a lot. I thought the mission was, was really good. Um, and that also blew me away, but, Something about this Crash to the Crown, I think it's just the most perfect album for a band like that that's been around forever uh, to do something so strong. And it, and again, it, it had a little bit of that pandemic vibe where it was like there were emotions in there that kind of you, you felt uh, mm. along during that time, which I thought really came through in some of the tracks, um, Sound the Alarm, some of those things. And um, but the performance is all around. And I just loved how it was 45 minutes. It's one vinyl. You know, it's it's it just it's in, it's out. There's no bullshit. Um, and it's still what you, you said, Pete, about what is there? Is it an album I'm still listening to even even two years later, three years later? This is definitely one that I still listen to that I just every time I just love. it. Yeah, those two sticks albums are amazing. It, I'm, it's so cool that this late in the game, they went back to their prog roots and said, this is what we're going to do going forward. But so many cool yeah. things. So awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Live, they play a, you know, a good number of tracks from it, at least yeah. on the last tour. So I think that's pretty cool. I like I like to see a band just do that. And, in, in, you know, screw it. We have a new album. We're going to play some songs. Like, yeah. absolutely, you know. That's cool. All right, Pete, see, what do you got? I see Scott Lades in the, in the uh, comments. Scott? There he is. Yep. Yeah, you probably missed my first pick. Norway, baby. He and I are simpatico <laughs> uh, the Norway stuff. Um, anyway, my uh, next pick is a band. They're from the Boston area, but I think they live in Germany now. Uh, they started out as a mm. basically a psychedelic stoner doom band. And over their last like three albums, they've just turned total like heavy prog. Amazing, amazing band. The band is called Elder. Innate Passage yeah. is the album. This is so good so good it's heavy it's thought provoking amazing riffs and they they really utilize keyboards and synthesizers to a great effect now long songs they still have that psychedelic element they've dropped most of the stoner and doom element but heavy prog definitely and they're now what they're they're opening up for tool i believe it is now and it's just like i mean that you don't get a gig like that unless you're really really good and i think a band like this is kind of in a similar position that what like uh, Porcupine Tree was all those number of years ago when they were really struggling to find uh, an audience and an identity and they just kind of started clicking with a larger audience. I think that's going to happen with these guys now because now all of a sudden like they were this cool psychedelic stoner band that a small group of people always loved and listened to. Now all of a sudden prog rock fans are, are taking these guys to heart. So yeah, that's my pick. Elder. Yeah. That when that album came out, that was like a big buzz kind of album that all of yeah. a sudden everybody was talking about. Everybody was writing about. And I, that's how I first listened to them. And it's, it is, it's a great, great record. What was funny was I saw them open for tool a few months ago and I, I it's sort of a, a pet peeve of mine uh, when a band performs because i mean they were good up there as an opening band it's fine the 30 minutes whatever i don't know if you saw them open on on that tour or not they but did. they 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 come out they don't say their names they don't say what song they're playing like no one really knows who they are really they just played four songs one right into the next you didn't even know when one song began or ended and then they just left <laughs> 
And that's going to have to change, right? Because that's, that's the mentality when they do their headline shows, right? Because that's what their audience expects. They know who they are. They know what they're going to play. Right. The out. There's no stage show. They just go out there. Maybe they got some lava lamps or strobe lights and they just do their thing. That That's going to have to change, obviously. No, I thought, well, you're opening for Tool, like at least say, hey, this is the second song off our new album or something, like something. I just, it's a weird thing. But they did their thing, you know, and that's, you know, I thought so that we was only got a half hour, guys. Let's just pedal to the Yeah, we got it. Let's get right. through it. Yep. All right, Jordan. Um, Jordan, what you got? Is a band that I would be surprised if anybody's heard of. Um, and, you know, not to do too much build up, but, you know, as music critics and writers and all that, we get sent so much music. And even if we love it, we write a positive review. It, it takes a lot for an album to like stick and stay and just like you constantly rave about it. And I remember distinctly getting an album in my inbox by a, a Norwegian band called Major Parkinson. Cannot explain their name, but they have an album called Black Box that I think is is maybe one of the best albums of the last of the 2010s. Um, it's very it's similar if you haven't heard of them. As soon as this podcast is done, YouTube a song called Madeline Crumbles. It is one of the most like creative, weird, batshit things I've ever heard. Um, similar to bands like Diablo Swing Orchestra or Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum, Unexpect. It's just like a very guttural, low male voice and horns and strings and just weird time signature changes. Um, and again, one of my favorite things is like repeating melodies or repeating themes throughout it. And it's just, it's one of those albums that the more you hear it, the more you hear how it flows. And I just remember like driving back from teaching one night, putting this album on, thinking, all right, so, you know, it's another album I could review. And just like not not getting in, not risking like getting in a car accident, but just kind of like wanting to just focus on it and digest it and just celebrate it. And it's been you know seven years now that I've been telling people you have to listen to this album called Black Box because so much like progressive metal is I find kind of similar, and they're all trying to kind of do the dream theater thing and and or between the buried and me kind of thing or Opeth kind of thing. And you hear an album like this, it's just right. like what the hell is this? And I gotta just, check that one out. I I have heard some of their stuff, but I don't think I've heard Black Box. I'll check that out. It's so good. Very cool. Yeah, I like that. It's just a good way to learn about some albums. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, Vic. Well, um, one of my favorite bands uh, over the last ten years. Uh, they've already been discussed, uh, and I went with something that I felt has already stood the test of time a little bit, and it's a very eclectic album, um, and that would be. Uh, Haken's Affinity. Um, yep. so, solid album. Um, got to witness it live, and they just absolutely nailed it. Um, saw them on Cruise to the Edge performing, you know, a couple of sets, which was absolutely excellent. And, you know, we've already spoken about Haken and what they bring to the table and just the, you know, two great guitarists that are just very creative. Uh, this album was when uh, Connor Green joined them, so he brought in a little bit of a, of a change there. Diego was playing keys is as good as anybody at this point. Um, and Ray on drums really started to become more of a polyrhythmic uh, addition to, to the stuff that they did. Uh, so much fun. Um, I still listen to it a lot. Um, and even to have a song, you know, the endless knot that almost has like a, like a dubstep drop, you know, it's, it's really cool how they can just incorporate aspects of electronic and other world music into metal, which makes it, you know, a great prog metal uh, conglomeration. So affinity. Yeah. That's a great one. I think 1985, that is uh, yeah. perfection. Just, just one of the best prog songs of the last 25 years. The solo, um, the tap, the tapping solo in Earthrise, you know, it's such a, such a cool little awesome. part it's, with the breakdown, you know, just, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Love that album. Um, all right. Well, somebody said they're surprised. Well, a frantic dev. They're surprised there hasn't been a mention of Devin Townsend. Well, we have to correct that, I guess. So uh, I think Jordan knows what I'm going to pick, and he probably was going to pick it too. Uh, but I'm going to go with Empath, um, which is, uh, you know, from 2019. Man, I think it's hard pressed to say there's just a more impressive album than this in recent years it it's so mind-blowing from every perspective just even thinking about writing that stuff is impressive and uh, the, the delivering of all the different tracks the 
the guest musicians, the performances, and then just, you know, from Y to, oh man, the, the, here, is it hear me? The metal, the metal track that comes right after it. And, uh, and then the, I mean, the, the last big epic, the whole thing is just, it's breathtaking. I think it's an amazing, amazing record. And to be honest, I was a sort of Devin fan before that album. Like some stuff I liked, some stuff I didn't, but once that album really solidified it for me that the man's a just, he's a lunatic, but he's a genius. And uh, I just, I don't know anybody else that could make that record. I remember production wise, <clears throat> best sounding album I've ever heard in my life. Okay. Ah, no, I remember sorry. we were talking through like Facebook Messenger um, when the promo went out and you're like, you have to listen to this now. And I listen, I think I listened to it all like talking to you. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've said ever since I discovered him with Synchestra in college that he's a he's one of the few artists I would say is a genius in, in modern progressive music. I think Empath is the culmination of everything that he is, everything that he does. So I, I mean, yeah, like I was about to go to that next, so I'm glad you did. And I think when we look back on Devin Townsend's whole like artistry and it's hard to even like nail down. He's one of those artists where it's like, which side of Devin do you not like or like? I think this is just the one to give somebody and say, here's kind of like a survey of everything. And if you want more, then I can pinpoint other things for you. Yeah. yeah it's almost like a, be a best of in, in a weird way of everything that he could do on one record. But when you hear it all in one record, it sounds insane. <laughs> You know, it's so you, cool. You talk about how it sounds terrific. I, I was just super impressed when Nolly and him would talk about how they how they would mix and how they would groove the frequencies and just really pay attention to, you know, every single part of the spectrum would be filled with a specific instrument. And thus, that's when you get his wall of sound that just sounds great. You know, it's 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 a wall of sound, but it's it's systematic it, or it's it's chaos but it makes perfect sense and it sounds so good and just the the musical the musical mind is you know i i don't use genius very much because i'm not one so i can't really relate to that but he he seems insane but nails it with this one so great pick he's kind of like the yeah. frank zappa of this style of music really when you think about it okay no no barriers yeah. no boundaries and just kind of does whatever he wants to do i mean for me I, I, I go way back with Devin and uh, like Terrier and Ocean Machine and some of those strapping young lad albums. I just I love them. Just those yeah. really, really speak to me. I mean, he was doing stuff back then that nobody else was covering. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned and, that and never before. wanting to never yeah. wanting to make the same album twice in a row. The minute mm -hmm. one thing became successful, he's like, Nope, I can't do it. I'm gonna do something completely different. I mean, that's you know. I remember when Ziltoid hit and we were all like, What is this? <laughs> It's like I love it, but I don't know what it is. It's like just bizarre, but it worked. It worked. It only <laughs> only works from from him. Yeah. All right, Pete. Number four, I think we're on. Yeah. Yeah, number four. All right, I'm going to stay in Norway for my last two picks, and uh, I feel very strongly about this one. I love this band. I've got the opportunity to see them live once, and they blew me away. Uh, I love this band because they bring the great vocal harmonies and the catchy melodies, but man, they deliver that like kind of like. I don't know, Deep Purple, Uri, Heap, Oomph, mixed with Genesis and Yes and blah, 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 blah. Magic Pie came mm. for a day. Ah. Oh, terrific album. Terrific band. Really yes. nice guys, too. They've yes. had lots of lineup changes, but, man, all their albums are so good. And to me, this one is by far their best. Uh, you know, they've got the big epic title track, which is just it's almost yeah. a half hour long, and you think you'd get bored and you don't. Uh, it's got just shorter songs, big epic songs. Introversion is great. Love the harmonies. The stuff is just so catchy. And then they, they yeah. nail you with these big Hammond organ flourishes and crunchy guitars. And yeah. I just love them. They don't sound no region at all, man. They just, they sound like, uh, you know, no, there's no uh, accent on the vocals and just sweet as pie right it's just but they're so heavy hitting so awesome love them can't wait for a new yeah album. i knew uh john fiala is watching i knew he would like that yeah. pick. he loves those guys yeah that's, that's a, a, that's a pick, terrific absolutely. terrific pick that's awesome that's awesome oh that's a good one somebody just recommended an album on a vola witness yeah that's fantastic that that i did think about that one love that one um all right pete uh jordan next one um, all right, so I'll switch it up and not go in chronological, but I'll pick another Norwegian band that I'm sure some people know, not enough people know. It's a band called Gaspacho, who created oh. some of the 
Greatest yeah. albums I've ever heard. Um, Night, Misanthropos, and March of Ghosts, but all of those came out before this. And full, full, full disclosure, not that anybody would even know, but full disclosure, I wrote the biography press release for this. Has nothing to do with my opinion of it, though. It's an album called Fireworker, which I think is mm -hmm. the best album they've done since March of Ghosts, probably even better than Demon. Um, and it's just, it's so subtle with the piano and the vocals and the concept and what what this concept is, is even more like cerebral and weird and ambitious than maybe anything else they've done. Um, and yeah, so I, I just yeah. think I'm kind of approaching it from the level of, I think Gaspacho as a whole band will go down as one of the most like unique art rock, prog rock bands of this generation. And if I had to pick one post like 2014, it's it's the newest one I think is the best since like 2012's March of Ghost. Yeah, those guys always deliver. I think the one that I would have gone with, which I think was before this one, was was going to be Demon. Was right? Demon was before, like yeah, 20, 2013, maybe. Twenty mm -hmm. was it twenty fourteen? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but great. They always do something really cool, and uh, yeah, we should be due for a new album from them. I think, right? Got any insight? I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't spoken to Thomas in a while. <laughs> I'm sure I could email him and say, "Hey, what's going on with this?" All right, Vic, what do you got? Uh, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, this was a band that uh, had an album in 2013. Yes, had an album in 2013. And it was kind of like a revival for this band. And I know that uh, my friend Kyle Graves is going to love this pick. Fate's Warning. This album was absolutely, I mean, going through and ranking uh, Faith Warning albums. This is, you know, personally, but also, you know, a lot of people, you know, rank this pretty high. And, yeah. and just, uh, even though they, you know, I was a big Mark Zonder guy, but Bobby Jarzombek, when he comes in and he's, right. he's perfect for this and, and just Jim Mateos is, is, just iconic when it comes to the, the the style that he writes in. Fate's Warning is just heavy and dark and moody, and it just hits right every time. And this album is just absolutely, I, I think it's already a classic um, in in the in the second half of their of their discography. Um, I I don't think there's a comparison. I think this is. This is the best, and and definitely will will stand the test of time because of of whom they are. So, yeah, that's a strong one. I I, I was surprised to see and looking at recent rankings of their albums that that's one that's that's pretty high up there, you know, and that's good. That's a fantastic record. Their last couple are great. It. It's it's puzzling that yeah, especially their last record was so strong, and then they're just yeah, like, right, we're done. We're not released. We're not recording any more albums. That's it. And it's just like, man, and, you know, I guess they went out on a high note, but yeah, man, you've been doing so good the last couple albums. It's like, keep going guys. But they don't, but that, they don't stop making music though. That's the thing. They're just doing every, they're, they're busy as hell. Just doing anything but Fate's Warning that, for some right? reason. We'll work with each other, but it's not going to be called Fate's <laughs> Warning, right? So. Yeah, but that's, that's, Dude, I what think did that's, you think of, uh, sorry, what did you think of that North Sea Echoes? What, I didn't, did you, did you check that one out? Did you review that one? Too mellow for you? I didn't like it at all. Yeah. I've liked all the other that stuff. Kind of like I thought A to Z was lots of fun. And the uh, the one that Jim did, um, the more melodic rock thing, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Um, that was really good too. Kings of something or other. Kings, Kings oh, Mercia. Mercia. Kings of Mercia. Yes. That was good too. Yeah. Uh, but the yeah. new one that you just did together, yeah, it didn't do it for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a mellow, mellow vibe on that one. Um, oh, is it my turn now? Am I up? Your turn. Oh, man. Okay. All right. I'm going to do it because we haven't done it yet. And so I am going to go the Neil Morse, Mike Portnoy route, but I'm going to go with, um, I just think to me of all their projects, this maybe is the least celebrated, but to me, it always had the potential to be the biggest one. And I just think it's because they never were, they never all focused on it. Uh, it was, so it's Flying Colors, and I'm going to go with the second album, Second Nature, which I think is amazing. And I just love this band, and I've said this many times, but if there was a period where if I could have picked my four musicians to be in a super, super group, it would have been Mike, Neil, 
Steve Morris and Dave LaRue. And I just didn't know who Casey was, but now that I do, he'd be my singer. So I think it's just, it's amazing. Anything with Steve Morris, first of all, puts it over the top for me. By the way, nice interview you did with him, Pete, uh, which you. is out on your channel. You can check that out. Um, yeah. But uh, I, and so for me, this is my favorite album of theirs. Um, it has a lot of songs that when they play live are just, they, they come off as those, these classic prog epics, Cosmic Symphony, Peaceful Harbor, the opening track, Open Up Your Eyes is, is amazing. There's amazing ballads on there. Um, I think it's an amazing album that it, if, cause Transatlantic always got more play and Transatlantic in many ways is a better band. Also, it, you could take your pick, but you have NMB, you have all these things, you have all these projects that they do. And I think the least paid attention to was always Flying Colors because of their commitments and everything that they always do. And, and Steve Morris being with Deep Purple all the time, they could do like eight shows every, you know, three years or something. Um, <clears throat> So I'm hopeful that maybe in 10, 25 years that you look back and with these guys on the, these albums that uh, that they're looked upon as, as something a little bit greater. I mean, but I think they're amazing. World, that band should would be and should be much bigger than they are. There, That's there's what so I many thought. great just straight rock and pop things going on on their albums. I mean, Peaceful Harbor just brings me to tears every time I listen to it. It's just a beautiful piece of music. And, uh, you know, Casey he's got that voice for like ma the mainstream. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, you know, they're just too proggy enough, I guess. Just enough. But when you hear off the first album, um, the storm, that that's an all time classic hit. It, it just is yeah. in, in any other generation, right? If journey records that in the late eighties, we're singing it today still. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, just like that. So anyway, all right, good. So we got Neil and Mike at least on this here properly. All right, last round, Pete. All right, so this is, it's number five here, but this is my number one. To me, this is a band that I think are the greatest prog band that have been, that have burst on the scene in the last, God, however long they've been around, 15 years, whatever it is. And the trick was, well, which album do I pick? It's like, well, a couple of them are go beyond the timeline, but any of the other ones they've released since 2014 are deserving. I'm going to pick their most recent one because I think it's fucking great. And they're from Norway also. They give us everything we love about Prague. You want Mellotrons? You got it. You want Moog? You got it. You want Taurus bass pedals? You got it. You want Rickenbacker bass? You got it. Acoustic electric guitars. Yes style vocals. Long songs. Did I mention Mellotron? Yeah, we got that too. Dwellers of the Deep by Wobbler. Greatest. I knew you were going there. Going today. I love them. <laughs> They're so good. And to me, every one of their albums is a five out of five star classic. And this blew me away when it came yeah. out. I think we're still going to be talking. Proggers are still going to be talking about Wobbler long after they're gone, 10, 20 years from now. I love these guys. So good. Yeah, they're derivative of the classics of the 70s, but who cares? That's what we love. And right. That's my yeah, favorite. well, they do it as authentically as you could hope for. They go, they dive in head first, make no apologies about it, and they do it well. For people that like that kind of stuff, it's as yeah, it's as good as it's as good as you can get. So Scratch I had a feeling you started talking. I was like, this that's where he's going. So yeah, that was good. Good pick. Um, all right, Jordan. Yeah, I was thinking of putting that on there too. I, I, mine is like Rights of Dawn. I think is my favorite. But I agree, like it's the same in the same way you could say, like, especially with David Longden, Big Big Train sounds like classic Genesis. That's you know, reductive, but in the same way Wobbler, yeah, they sound like yes. Anyway, I agree, it's a good one. Um, so my last one is gonna be a band that I think is one of the greatest progressive rock slash metal bands ever. Um, and as I've often said, like a lot of progressive music, I think aims to be more like style over substance. And to me, I've always kind of said if the songwriting isn't there the rest hardly matters or doesn't matter as much. And I would argue that Riverside from Poland has some of the best songwriting ever in progressive music. And Mariusz is one of the best songwriters, one of the nicest people. Um, so Riverside is one of those bands that I, is just like the great, greatest songwriting next to everything else. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say this is my favorite. It's it's from 2015 called Love, Fear, and the Time Machine. I still like the Reality Dream trilogy the most, Second Life Syndrome especially. Um, but I think this is their best since Shrine of New Generation Slaves. Um, and Love, Fear, and the Time Machine kind of sees them kind of hinting at where they went with their last album of more like 
pop rock 80s synth like not too far but it's it's definitely less metal than what came before it um yeah. i think the opening song is one of the catchiest songs and it's just so like catchy and the same thing but the songwriting is just key and then they happen to go into these great like tricky instrumental breaks but they're one of those bands that no matter how how much time they devote to jamming and getting complicated, it never feels like it's showy. It never feels like they're trying to impress you. It suits the music. It suits the songwriting. It's very classy and contained and, and melodic. It's not tricky just to be tricky. It's all melodic. Right. Um, and yeah, I just, I think Riverside is one of the best bands ever, probably period. Um, so Live, they're them. fantastic. They're so great. Yeah. And you're right. Mario's is just so awesome. Um, uh, that would have, that was on my list, uh, so I'm glad I'm glad you did mention it. That was, my Riverside uh, pick would have been that album. I think it's I think it's a great, it's a very deep album. It has some great emotional moments on it, some great acoustic pieces on there. Um, the fourth song is it Caterpillar? Uh, is it Caterpillar and Butterfly? It's like one of my all time favorite Riverside songs. Um, you said yeah, the key word, the, Roy. It's emotion. There are very few bands yeah. that are able to capture true raw emotion like Riverside, and that's why everybody mm -hmm. loves them so much. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know what? They're really yeah. even today, even in 2024, just they keep growing slightly, and more people are finding out about them on a cruise to the edge. They're like huge. They're <laughs> like immensely popular on the ship, which is awesome. They're a band that have captured the unfortunate tragedy of losing their guitarist, and and but they're so honest in their songwriting that it just really. It really connects with the audience, and you know, it, I love the interaction that Marius is always having with the audience, leading him through melody lines and choruses, and just really wanting to be a part of the audience, connecting with the artist. Uh, yeah, they're 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 absolutely terrific. Yeah, nice uh, nice pick. Yes, yeah, great. Uh, pick. All right, Vic, you you awesome. Well, this is not going to be a surprise for any of the Prog reporters and uh, Prog Report followers. Uh, this is an album that was hyped before it was released. Mike Portnoy was very vocal about this, and I'm talking about the Neil Morse Band and the Similitude of a Dream. Double concept album. Yep. Enough has been said awesome. about it. Um, I, I, I think, once again, I think it's already a classic. And just, you know, in, in the vein of classic albums, concept albums, double albums, this thing checks all the marks. Um, the emotion that it elicits in live performances, I've never seen in every concert that I've been to where either this has been performed in its entirety or in sections where you have full-grown men, rooms of full-grown men absolutely bawling of how emotional <laughs> this true. is. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, another mention of, of you know, for, for our crew, we love Neil Morse, we love my Portnoy, and, you know, a lot of us think that this is the, the top album uh, that they've uh, done stuff together. So, similitude of a dream. Rock on. Yeah, that's good. That had to be included in here. And I think yeah. that's already one that's included on best concept album list and things like that. And I think right. very easily I could see that 10, 20 years from now still being, maybe not in the mainstream, but in the prog, prog mainstream. I think it's, I think it's up there for sure. I agree. That's, I'm glad we got that one in there. Um, okay. So, yeah, I was going to go a few different ways with my last one, but seeing as how this band hasn't been mentioned as with an album in this in this list, uh, I got to go Big Big Train, and uh, and I'm going to go Folklore. Um, I, my favorite albums by them are are Under Fall Yard and, and English Electric. I think those are still the tops, but if I had to pick just right under that, I think Folklore is just amazing. Um and also, this is a band, we're talking about emotion. For me, this band is all about that. And everything about them is, is in, it gets you in the feels, like it just does. Even from just the opening of, of Folklore Song itself. Though, you know, the, 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 uh, the brass intro where it, that they use to, to open the shows, that alone is just, gives you chills, it's the best thing ever. But there's a lot of great songs on there. Winky's a, a, a really cool uh, kind of story song in there with a lot of cool prog moments. Um, I love them. I think they're they are the the genesis of of this era. They 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 carry that torch and they do it amazing. 
and the new album is great even with with you know alberto taking over it it's just an awesome listen that you know i was almost going to go sort of uh, uh, a little uh sort of like picking something brand new and really throwing into speculation and just saying i think like the likes of us from big big train would be the one that is going to be and and that could very well end up being the case it's that good but um yeah i think folklore is going to be the one that i go with but we got to include big big train in something like this so I yeah gonna... i think we covered a lot of uh new bands and some weird bands and and pete you introduced the system band so we covered everything here any any honorable mentions I've got a couple, but these are more like uh, one-offs because bands are no longer uh, together. Uh, back in 2015, I've got uh, Quiet World by Native Construct, which was a project during the the band when they were in Berkeley and they recorded this program drum machine that sounds like a real drum, amazing stuff. Um, going more into the fusion side of things, um, which is in the vein of, of, of Haken, uh, the further side by Nova Collective, uh, Pete Jones, had rejoined, and then you had the bass player from uh, BT Bam, uh, Dan Briggs, was in that band, and then Lynch on the drums. He's an absolute beast. And then uh, I believe this is also a band from Norway, and I'm not sure what their status is because they unfortunately, I think their drummer tragically passed away. Uh, the album is A Boat at Sea by The Moron Police. Uh, that's another one of those. I, I kind of. The, that's the, the, awesome. That album yeah. kind of is like the magic pie album you know it's it's it it just it hits the right spots when it comes to prog rock um so it, it's because they I, I don't know if they're going to get the publicity in order to be classics but anybody listens to those they tend they tend to really just impact deeply maybe they'll become cult followings kind of like you know uh shaming of the true who knows yeah I, any honor, honorables or, or jordan whoever um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go. Um, yeah, I was I was gonna put Grim and Pound by Big Big Train on there. I mean, everything I think they've done, even before David joined, is is great. The new one's great. Um, but to me, Grim's Pound, I don't know. I like the, a Mead Hall in Winter. I think is just great song. Uh, yeah, like the melodies, the mute. Anyway, so I was gonna put that on there. I was gonna put Polaris by Tesseract on there. Oh, um, okay. And since. Really cool. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, and since Weather Systems by Anathema came out in 2012, which is the most important album I've ever heard, I'm not going to get into that. Um, I put oh. Distant Satellites on there. Um, such a such a shame that that band isn't around anymore. Um, I was saying that the other day, Vic. Didn't I say that the other day? Yeah. I was listening to them, and yeah. you're right. There's no band like Anathema. They were never like my favorite favorite band, but like, just they they sounded like no one else, and it's That's a shame. Sure. And also, yeah. of course, I would put everything, just side note, I would put everything the Deer Hunter and Dirt Poor Robbins have done. Too. Oh, Act, Act 5. Oh, geez. But anyway. Um, yeah, Deer yeah, Hunter is definitely our, our love. You get to the end of, like, weather systems, we're here because we're here, and how do you not, like, ball your eyes out? Um, but the other yeah. honorable mention I had is a, is a case of a band that is very conventional, old school, like, retro, but they nail it. It's a band called Southern Empire Civilization. Yeah. I think it's to me it's one of those bands where people will say this sounds like older stuff and I'll say yeah but is it it's as good it's derivative maybe but they're doing it as well yeah. so why not yeah a lot of people like that one too Pete how about you yeah I got a couple a few were already mentioned uh, I had uh, both Crash of the Crown and the Mission on my list because I think they're both terrific uh, I had Opeth Sorceress but you could pick any of them uh, Symphony X Underworld. Oh. From a mm -hmm. metal perspective, I, that's one of my favorite albums, but I think it's great, and I think that's going to stand the test of time. I had Kaleidoscope by Transatlantic, just makes the cut here for 2014. Uh, the Absence of Presence by Kansas. I had that down. What a great album. It almost was in my five, uh, really. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I think years from now when people are over the whole, oh, but it doesn't have Steve Walsh, I think people are going to realize that it's one of the great Kansas albums. It's really good. It really, really good. Uh, from Sweden, I have Agusas and Uninvarled from 2021. Great instrumental prog band. Very kind of folky, mm -hmm. excellent stuff. I also had Similitude of a Dream on my list. And uh, I threw in just because I'm like, you can't do this and not have a Dream Theater album. I, I drew a view from the top of the world on here, which I think is, to me, their strongest album that they've done in this time period here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't know, a couple more. I mean, we covered a lot that I had on my list between just these last few talks. Life Signs, uh, Altitude from a couple of years back is it was very high on my list and i think that's amazing 
Um, the Trevor Rabin album, Rio, which came out last year, I think That's is yeah. amazing. Um, and then I wanted to throw one. I almost put this in my five just to sort of be able to say I predicted it 25 years from now. But, you know, because sometimes, like, if if we were doing this back when Opeth had just released their first album, would we have said it would be a classic? You know, that was sort of where my head was. Or it, it, take any band. Um, but I think this band has the potential to do it. I'm going to say Ocarus, uh from Norway with uh, the approbation, which came out last year on a major label, got a decent amount of attention. They're still young guys. They still are figuring stuff out, but it was an amazing debut. Sounded great. It had all the makings of a really good prog band. And I think they have a shot if they stick together and keep doing their thing of, uh, of maybe becoming one of those bands, but we'll see. Um, but guys, thank you. This was a lot of fun. We just, just made it about an hour. Pete, man. Good. Uh, thanks for, for taking some time and uh, from your busy schedule and joining us. It was good to drop in here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll always stay in touch. And Jordan, uh, we'll see you soon because we're planning on doing another podcast. We won't talk about it, but uh, there's one coming up we're doing, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, Vic, I'll talk to you again real soon, guys. All right, good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Rock on. Good night, everybody.